So yesterday was the final stage of Etoile de Passage, which was a time trial. It was pretty flat and had a steep sort of two, three minute, or well, like a four minute climb. People Gana won, surprise, surprise. Matt Pedersen, Benjamin Thomas also performed very strongly. Thibaut Gernalak um, has his power data up, so we'll have, have a look at that. Jay Vine also did very well, won the Mountains jersey. And then we can see some other riders as well. Uh, Tobias Hallam Johansson, who won the stage the day before up a steep climb, he looked really good as well. So here's the Strava segment itself, uh, which, you know, is uh, 41 kilometers now. So actually, you know, in, a, in all in all, quite slow time trial, but obviously there's a big hill. Gonalak, J Vine, Tiberi, we don't really get Shampuzan and some of the other boys uploading their power data, unfortunately. Uh, but nonetheless, we can have a good, good analysis and we can see here how much sort of correlation there is with power and weight and all the rest of it. So I think what's most important, first of all, is we're going to compare Thibaut Gunalak and Jay Vine, who finish very close to each other, and just see, you know, the differences between the two rides. So this is Jay Vine's ride uh, now. So super strong numbers, 444 normalized for 16 minutes, which is about 6.3 watts per kilo for him. So you can see super, super strong, uh, like all in all. But I think what I want to see at first is just the the actual uh, flat part. So this is the flat section. So 46 kilometers an hour. If we if we just go for the whole part, 47 kilometers an hour, 400 watts, which is obviously like pretty strong. But again, like there was a lot of U turns, hence why the speed isn't too long. And we're going to have a look at Thibaut Gunalak, who's more of a sort of traditional pursuiter, a little bit heavier, and um, it's really quite interesting just to see at the difference. So he averaged 48 kilometers an hour. But if we sort of just go from the bit he actually rode, it's more like 49 kilometers an hour. Okay, he did about 10 watts more uh, or so, but he went significantly faster. And I think this goes to show the aerodynamics because if we look at the climbing times, they're completely different. But two kilometers an hour difference, okay, you might say, Charlie, like the, the normalized is quite different, but I'm not sure how relevant that is. But if we look at the climbing time here, so he did 6.6 .6 watts per kilo for four minutes, going like it took him four minutes to do it. And you look at Jay Vine, put 20 seconds into him. But look at the wattage difference here. Uh, you know, obviously, I think Jay Vine is a slightly different weight, weight so he's like 70 kilos, going to like 72. So, you know, it's not going to be 100% correct. But he did almost 100 watts more than him and gained like 20 seconds. And you're just like, that's a lot of effort. And you think on the flat, going like did what, like 10 watts more and was two kilometers an hour quicker? Like, that is pretty bonkers when you think about it. Nine minutes 35 for the flat section, nine minutes 59. That's a lot more what's having to put out. And I think it goes to show that obviously, like, you just need to be really aero. And you, you, negative split for sure, definitely. Always negative split. You want to go harder on the section where it's slower because you can make up more time. But, you know, 470 watts versus like 525, you can sort of see like the crazy difference needed um, if you're just not aero. And they finished about the same time. So I think that's pretty important. We can also go have a look at some other people as well because I think. Like, so this is Jay Vine, sorry. Um, and then we can also look at uh, Connor Swift as well. He had a pretty strong result. But again, like, he's a little bit heavier, 77 kilos, 440 normalized again, um, but was a lot slower as well. Uh, then we can also see Tobias Johansson, who is significantly lighter. He whacked out 6.7 watts per kilo for about 12 minutes at the final stage on Saturday. Uh, and you can see again here, he did like a 6.7 watts per kilo um, on the climb. So again, nothing crazy, but on the flat, um, he was pretty quick. He's got a pretty dialed setup. You know, their Uno X, they've got the one by on the front. So he ran a one by up here, which is pretty impressive. Um, you can see maybe the cadence suffered a little bit, but uh, I think here it probably did. But all in all, probably makes sense for the error gains. Plus, he had the watch shop Animoy error extensions as well. Um, and he did error testing. And he said, look, Guillaume Van book did 430 watts, but weighs like 85 kilos. So went very slowly like you can see on the flat even here he's going like obviously you know 47k now 430 watts so you're like that's that's quite a lot more than gonna like and j vine um taz jones was at 440 watts up here and you look at the climb again 409 all in all um it goes to show that like watts are important but cda is like the key by a long way like rasmus tiller he's huge he's like 85 kilos um he whacked out 490 watts normalized, 470 all in all, but again, average like 38 kilometers an hour. So um, yeah, not uh, not the strongest performance we've ever seen. Well, a strong performance watts wise, but not a strong performance necessarily in terms of result, just because um, 
he's such a big boy. And I think that, again, that goes to show the weight on this on this one. This climb was very important. Um, in terms of tech, there wasn't too much. A lot of one bar, or a couple one buys, but that was about it really. Um, but anyway, I hope you did enjoy this sort of small analysis. I think it goes to show that Jay Vine, you know, if he could sort out his aero numbers, like you know, the three watts off similar weight, you know, I reckon was well, lighter if anything. Um, Jay Vine, but if he could just whack more, um, just get more speed from the flat then he'd look super, super good um, for time trialing because he's got the numbers. He just needs to get a little bit more aero. And I reckon he could have like come a lot closer because his performance up the climb was absolutely crazy. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video and we'll see you in the next one.